Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna go through my top five favorite sealed items in my collection. It was difficult to choose five, but I picked the five things that I kind of cherish the most and would have the hardest time ever letting go if it ever comes down to that. So in number five, we're starting off with a little bit of a cheat because it's more than one item, but they're from the same series and these are trainer magazines. So I have only a few. I have the number five, I have the number seven, and I have two number 12s sealed. These are so cool. They are such a cool part of the Pokemon history. Number five comes with, it's not advertised on here, but it comes with a Neogenesis Steelix that as far as I know, it's a holographic, is only available here, Japanese exclusive. Look at the advertised the Grand Party. Very expensive cards these days, the Grand Party. Uh, the number seven comes with the Smeargle, non hollow. You can see it right there. And then number 12 comes with the, there it is, the Rockets Scizor from the Versus series. And I actually have a raw copy right here. We can look at it a bit up close. Yeah, these are just so cool. Uh, this card, specifically the Rockets Scizor, is available in English, but it is a best of game promo and it's a non holographic. So, as a holographic, it is a Japanese exclusive, of course, versus series as well. And yeah, I just really, really like this card. I really like Scizor. I think it's such a cool artwork and it's part of the versus series, one of my top three favorite sets of all time. And I just really love these. And I would actually say, by the way, that these trainer magazines, you know, these are sealed and all these are not that expensive. Uh, these are a bit harder to find. This one's very easy to find. Um, there's some really expensive ones. Trust me, the number one is very expensive. There's some other ones that are super expensive. Uh, this is the number 10, and this one is open. So what I was gonna say is that I think these are worth picking up even opened if you can get them for a good deal because they are just so cool. So number 10 was actually, even though it has this card on the back, it actually came, if we can find the page, uh, it actually came with the legendary Dark Venusaur and Dark Ivysaur cards. These are so cool. Uh, I, I love these. And yeah, I mean, these are cool just to kind of look through, you know, even open. There's some really cool artwork in here. There's some a uh, little bit of like comic manga style stories in the back as well. Usually they introduce some of the game mechanics and like some of the, some new cards or some new products. Like for example, like this one in the back, they are advertising uh, the Neo intro pack, such cool cards in there as well. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I just love these for the history and there's some, some really cool stuff in here and, uh, yeah, just cool stuff. And the ones that come with cards, by the way, the cards are in these little cardboard sleeves, not all trainer magazines come with cards. So be careful what you buy if you want cards, but if they have cards, they come in these little like paper cardboard paper sleeves that you can open up to get the cards out. So they're actually pretty well protected when they're sealed. Like, uh, not much can happen to the cards. And this was in there as well. Very cool stuff. You can see some of the uh, Neo Revelation cards in here. Super cool stuff. I don't know, I just love these. These are so unique, so unique, so cool. And just such a cool part of the history. Um, I don't know how many there are. I think it's like 19 or 20. Maybe I could be, I think I'm completely wrong here, but there's a lot. And some of them are very expensive. There's some that come with multiple cards uh, as promos and those can be a few hundred dollars. So if you want some of the cheaper ones, like these are definitely some of the cheaper ones. The Scizor is a bit hard to find because, um, or for good deal, because there's only a few on the market. But this is one that frequently pops up for good deals or occasionally, I shouldn't say frequently. And the Smeargle you can find all the time for a good deal. And the, the Steelix also isn't too hard to find. But yeah, these are really cool and my uh, kind of top five item on my sealed collect in my sealed collection or a collection of items, but from like one one kind of uh, series, so to speak. All right, moving on. In place number four, I have some booster packs. So again, more than one item, but they're the same booster packs. And these are from 2009. They were released alongside the Arceus movie. There's seven cards per booster pack. And I don't know, I just think these are so cool. And the best thing about these is that every single booster pack contains a holographic. There's six different holographic cards in a set. There's three Pichus and three Arceus cards. They have an insane holo pattern. They look beautiful, amazing looking cards. And they're not really that expensive. Like if you just want the card, you can pick them up for not too much. 
Uh, I'll try and blend it in, blend in the cards so you can see what they look like. I only have one raw co uh, copy that is with PSA right now, but yeah, I, I just I love these. And even the non hollows in here are pretty good. Like it's Pikachu, Totodile, Cyndaquil, I think. Just really, really cool cards. And the artwork on this booster pack is crazy. I mean, look at this. Doesn't this look amazing? With Ash, Brock, Pikachu, Pichu, Team Rocket down here. You know, and then what's really what's really cool is that the artwork like wraps around. So there's even a little bit on the back. So if you hold these next to each other and you turn one around this way, you see how Ash and Pikachu kind of connects to the back of the other booster pack. If we hold it up just in the right place, <laughs> sort of like this. But yeah, I don't know. And then it's like on the other side, you have like the ear of Pichu that like wraps around. I don't know. I just really like these. And on the back, you have Pikachu the movie, 2009. Yeah, I think these are really cool. And I like these a lot because... The raw cards are super easy to find, but actually finding booster packs is not that easy. There's not that many listed. Like it is much easier to find like a vintage Japanese jungle, fossil, base, rocket, whatever booster pack. But these don't really come up. You can look up what, you know, there's a few on eBay, but people are asking quite a lot of money for them. I wouldn't buy those. Um, but yeah, um, these are quite hard to find. And I just, I just, I love these. I think these are really cool. And one of them still has like a sticker on it from when it was purchased. But yeah, anyways. Number four. So for number three, two, and one, it was not quite as easy to rank them. I had a bit of a hard time, but I ended up putting this in number three. It is the Rockets Tyranitar versus Series Half Deck. I really like this. Again, like I said earlier, Versus Series is one of my top three sets. Maybe my number one. I can't decide, but definitely top three. Comes with a cool Celebi coin. And it comes with uh, a bunch of cards, a lot of a lot of uh, energy cards in here as well. But in the back, there's also a holographic versus series energy, which is kind of cool too. And I have a raw card of the Tyranitar, so we can look at it up close a little bit. Yeah, really cool. Of course, versus series exclusive to Japan, and just really really cool. I like it because it was the first set with the new back. It was the first set that had the modern numbering system, so something out of something. Uh, Rocket's Tyranitar is the first official secret rare, so it's 142 out of 141. And it's also the first set, Japanese set, that had first edition variants of cards. Very, very cool. Super unique. Now, of course, all of these are going to be first edition, <laughs> so it's not really that special, but just kind of a unique little thing about this uh, specific set and this specific card. And I just really like these. And these seals, uh, they've gone up in price a little bit recently, and uh, I think they're still an okay price if you want one for your collection. Uh, obviously, this is not worth cracking open to like grade the card or anything like that, but as a sealed collection, uh, as a sealed item for your collection, I think this is really cool. And I love the artwork at the top as well. Super, super cool. Number three. Okay, so number two and number one was super difficult, but I think I made the right decision. Number two is a 2005 Poke Park blue sheet sealed. So these are cool. As you can see the seal down here, it's still nice and sealed. These are awesome because most people know the Neo Premium files, number one, number two, number three. In fact, most people who have Japanese cards in their collection probably have some of the Premium File 1 cards. However, these Poke Park files, they are hard to find sealed. There's a green one, it's called the Forest Sheet and the Blue Sheet. The green one is much more desirable. It's very expensive because some of the cards inside are exclusive. I thought, always thought they were all exclusive, but I recently saw uh, the Pikachu. I saw it in English, I think, the artwork. So I'm not 100% sure they're all exclusive. But they are quite expensive. The blue one is quite expensive too. Um, but most importantly, these are really hard to find sealed. Um, there is an article in Bulbapedia that says only a thousand were given out at uh, Poke Park. So if you don't know, Poke Park was a Pokemon amusement park that was in Japan for for six months. And uh, I'll show you some some stuff from Poke Park afterwards. But the article says that only like a thousand were giving out. I don't buy that for one second. I think if only a thousand of these ever made it to the public, I don't think I would have one sealed right now because there would be 
way more expensive. Uh, so I think there's more than a thousand, but there's not that many. Um, these are hard to find sealed, hard to come by. When they do pop up, people usually ask a really crazy price. And uh, yeah, I, I think these are really cool. I got really lucky with how I got mine. We have a Kyogre, Ho, these are both non-hollow. Then we have a Suicune, which is a hollow. We have an Entei, Rayquaza hollow, Groudon, Lugia hollow, Raikou, and T Taurus. So these artworks are all available in English. Okay, so that's why the that's why the blue one is cheaper than the green one. And uh, on the back, you can kind of see the big artwork of like the cards, you know, kind of put together into like one big art piece. Super cool. I have one raw card only, and it's in okay condition. It's not in the best condition, but it's the Rayquaza. I picked up the Rayquaza raw, and I don't know. It's just really cool. You see the holographic there, the holographic pattern. It has some issues at the top, as you can see, but it's still a very nice copy for the binder. And then you can see they have like a Poke Park little stamp down here. Super cool, super interesting stuff. And now let me show you some items from Poke Park. So this is something I actually picked up just because I love the history of Poke Park. So like I said, Poke Park was a Pokemon amusement park that was in 2009 in Japan for around six months. So you can see down here, March until... September. Afterwards, they moved it to Taiwan for a short while, and then it disappeared. Maybe it wasn't worth it. Maybe they didn't make any money. I don't know. It disappeared. And this is the map. And let's try and open it up. So there's a lot of promos from Poke Park, actually. Uh, sealed, like, little blister promos, non-hollows that you can buy. And they're all, I think, really cool cards to pick up for your collection. You can see some of the stores, some of the partner companies. But let's see if we can open up the map. This is going to be very hard to show on camera, but just there's some of the food items you could buy. Some merchandise. And yeah, let's just see. <laughs> the map is going to be very difficult to show in its entirety, obviously. But I'll try my best because I don't have that much room in front of the camera. But here's a layout of the park, Pokemon Park. There's a Ferris wheel, there's some rides. And... Each ride, for each ride, if you went on a ride, you get a you get a promo card, and those are the sealed blister promos I just talked about. So they all have a stamp on the card, on the promo card that is associated with the ride. So there you can see all the different rides, and then here you have the description. So here we have like the the names of the rides, and then um, you know the associated name would also be on the. Like there's a Lugia ride, for example. So the Lugia promo, the non-holo has like a, that kind of stamp on it. So really, really cool. And then up in the corner there, this right here that Celebi is sitting on, is a Toys R Us. Now, the reason why the Toys R Us is relevant is because, like I said, the Bulbapedia article says that only a thousand were handed out for free as promos when the park first opened. And again, just the amount of cards that are out there, how many of these are opened out there and sealed, even even though sealed are hard to find, there must be more than a thousand. Because again, imagine 2005, little kids opening these up, they would be lost. Most of these would have been lost throughout the years. So what also makes me think that there's more than a thousand of these out there is because I found a Japanese forum entry from many years ago where someone talked about how after they were given out for free, they were sold at this Toys R Us for a a certain time. I don't know how long, I don't know how many, but they were able for, they apparently they were able to purchase at this very Toys R Us. So that's why I think that there's more than a thousand of these out there. But yeah, anyways, really cool. And we also have a couple stickers. These are like big stickers, they're like kind of holographic, at least this one is. I think these are actually, or some of these actually came in the sealed uh, Poke Park file. So the the file I showed you, the blue sheet, actually has some stickers, kind of like these. I'm not sure if it's exactly these or different ones, but inside as well. Just really cool. Uh, some other things I still want to buy from Poke Park. They had like these, they're called Eddie Cardo, Eddie cards, which were used to pay in the park. They're like little, like, uh, they look like credit cards, basically. But they had like a chip, and that's what you use to pay for things in the park. And I want to pick up some of those. And they actually came in booster packs for some reason. So you can even buy those sealed, technically. But people are asking a bit too much for them in my opinion. But yeah, that's Poke Park. That's my number two. Moving on to my number one item in my sealed collection. This is something I cherish a lot. It's old. It's beat up. 
and everyone has seen it, but it is a original two-player starter set. Now you might wonder, why is this number one instead of the Poke Park or the booster packs or whatever, right? The reason why this is number one, there's a couple of reasons. Reason number one, it's the only sealed item I have still from the stuff I purchased back in 2015, 2016. I briefly got back into the hobby. I got some, you know, I bought some first edition booster packs and other like raw cards. Everything is opened. Everything has been put in binders or sent to PSA or whatever. This is the only item I still have from that time that is still sealed. So that's why that already makes it valuable to me. The box is beat up. It's sun faded like crazy over here. Let's just look at the color of the text. Uh, the plastic wrapping has seen better days. It has, uh, you know, a couple of, uh, like, uh, you know, it's a little banged up here. There's some indentations, like some creases on the front down here. It's beat up. <laughs> But the other reason why this is really cool and what I love about it is that it, it is a base set two player starter set, but it is, it's not a shadowless, <laughs> but it is a UK 99 to 2000. There's, you can see right there, 99 to 2000 UK version of the starter set. So 99 to 2000, some might know, some might not know, is like the fourth print, people call it the fourth print of base set. You have first edition, shadowless, unlimited, fourth print or 99 to 2000. So it's a variant of base set, which is kind of cool. It's not really valued higher, but I just think it's really cool. Now, what's very special about this one in particular is that all the regular cards are guaranteed to be 99 to 2000 versions. So there is four Charmanders in here that are all 99 to 2000, for example. Really cool. However, the infamous Machamp, a card that everyone knows, that everyone has owned at some point, is not guaranteed to be 99 to 2000. If you didn't know, if you open a 99 to 2000 booster pack and you get a holographic card, a regular booster pack from a booster box, you get a holographic card, it is not guaranteed to be fourth print. Uh, same with the Machamp in this starter set. Very cool. Interesting also, it's on here, it's unlimited. It doesn't have a first edition stamp. It will still be a first edition Machamp, just like every other one of these. But there is a chance that it's 99 to 2000, which would make it more valuable than a regular one. I don't know about how much, <laughs> but I would certainly not sell it for the same price as a regular one. I'll throw up the PSA population so you can see how many have been graded by PSA as 99 to 2000 Machamps. There's not a lot of these out there. Now, PSA only recently started to acknowledge not the 99 to 2000 variant. So probably a lot of these were graded as regular unlimited Machamps before PSA started to use 99 to 2000. And so we have no idea how many of these are sitting in the old PSA slabs. Uh, no clue. Uh, I'm in a Discord, and someone in the Discord, uh, actually one of the owners, has opened up, uh, I think, at least one case of these in the past, maybe multiple cases of these. And he said, if he remembers correctly, even from the same case, some of them would be fourth print the champs, and some of them were not, even from the same case. <laughs> so there's no way of knowing. Like, even if you get a case of these, and you open one, and then it's fourth print, there's a chance that the others are not. Uh, the person said that in his experience, and he has opened a lot of fourth print booster packs as well, but also these, in his experience, it's like a 50-50 chance roughly. Now, I don't think I'll ever open this. I thought about it a lot, but it's my only sealed item from back in the day. Um, it's, uh, I like the mystery of not knowing <laughs> if it's fourth print or not. Um, yeah, it's just kind of the mystery about it I find so cool. And, uh, you know, the card is even fourth print. It's not worth that much, right? It's not like this is a Shadowless Machamp where if it gets a 10, it's worth like quite a lot of money. The card, even fourth print, it's not worth that much. But I just like having this, you know, variant 99 to 2000 in my collection. When I bought it back in 2015, I had no clue about, you know, fourth print or the UK version. I bought it from an eBay seller from the UK. So, you know, chances were high that I would get the fourth print one. But... Here it is, um, yeah, just really cool. And a, yeah, cool piece of the Pokemon history. And if somehow fourth print ever becomes super popular and people like 
treat it like the other variants or like a different variant and pay, pay more for it than having the Charmanders in here and the other cards and maybe Machamp. I don't know, just really cool. And so this is why this is number one, the number one item in my sealed collection. Um, everything else Japanese. I 99% of my collection is Japanese. 99.9% .9 of my collection is Japanese, but my number one item is actually English, which is kind of funny. But, you know, it's number one because it's my only sealed item from when I got back into the hobby. And oh yeah, you can see like a, a stain from the sticker here as well. Um, yeah, and there is a lot of cool stuff, history sort of, uh, you know, details about this box. And it's a big, big mystery of what's inside with the Machamp, which I think is really cool. Anyways, that's it. These are my top five favorite sealed items in my collection. Bit of a longer video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment what your favorite items are in your sealed collection or in your collection in general. I'd love to hear. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.